O menet kapiahi okalani pati kenani benem ko inoa ua hanau yao ma Monterey, Fort Ord, California, Kaliponi, a ua hanai yao ma mauna lua o ahu. O Emmeline ke onana ona pua pati ken ko uma kuahine no kaaava o ahu oya. O Albert Henry ko uma kuakane no kaimaki. Oya, Oahu Oya. Ma, uh, Malivao, ya Robert Benham, uh, Ilua Keiki Kamaua, O Kaimi, He Keiki Kane, a O Kiana, Ke Keiki Vahine, a O Keiki Kamako Ilio. Uf, uf, uf. Ke Nohane Mako, Mama Noa, Ike Ahu Pua'a, O Kavai. O kavaiki ki, ika moku o kona, ika moku puni o o ahu. O vau ke po'o o ke ko leke o Hawaii nui a kea ma ke kula nui o Hawaii mama noa. Velina mai, ko, velina mai aloha. Aloha, I am Maynette Kapiahiokalani Padikanani. I was born in Monterey, Fort Ord, California. Um, and I was raised on Oahu in both uh, Kaimuki and Mauna Lua, Hawaii Kai, as some people know it. My mother is Emmeline Keonana Onopua Padikan from Ka'aava. And my father is Albert Henriani, uh, raised in Kaimuki. His family is from Pa Pa, South Kona, on the island of Hawaii. My husband is Robert Benham, and we have two children, Kaimi and Kiana, who is with me today, our little dog, Keiki. We currently live in Manoa, and I am the Dean of Hawaii Nui Akea School of Hawaiian Knowledge at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I ask our Akua for a little wisdom from our kupuna so that I can share with you my thoughts to speak from both my na'au and my pu'uvai in a manner that will move your spirit. I'd also like to mahalo our kupuna upon whose shoulders each of us stand upon and whose teachings inspire us, help us to be imaginative, and awaken our senses. I'd also like to thank everyone who has prepared this space for your graduation today. And I'd like to acknowledge the women who are accompanying me from Hawaii Nui Akea Kawai Hoelani Center for Hawaiian Language. Ka'iolani Kanehailua, Loki Lani Fergustrum, and Kalehua Kava'a. Uh, they are members of Professor Kiave Lopez's Tuahine Serenaders. And finally, I would like to mahalo my dear friend and mentor, Dr. Virginia Henshaw. I am again honored to share this space with you this morning. So I presented my first uh, graduation speech in, for the mini med school last spring, and I just had a really wonderful time, primarily because Virginia asked me to share stories, stories that inspire, which is really right within my wheelhouse, because I know that in the na'o, in the belly of the mo'olelo, of the stories, resides grace and truth, which is very, very important um, in the work that I do at the university, in our communities, and at home. I always must ground myself in my na'o. I need to seek balance there, wisdom, and insight, because I know that this will help me to deal with the simple and sometimes very complex conundrums and challenges I face. And it is in this centering place, in this storied place, that I am reminded, reminded of a fundamental truth. Iulu no kalaau ike kumu. It is essential that we learn from those who come before us. So while I draw on my professional experiences in educational leadership, as well as my scholarship in the areas of organizational theory and educational policy, I know that to be an effective and inspirational leader, I need to go deeper to the place 
that gives me perspective and where I can remember the lessons learned in the life story so generously shared by Kupuna and Kumu. Indeed, these are your life stories because you, each one of you, you are the teachers of our next generation of leaders. Last graduation, I told stories about my grandmothers, Esther Kavaiola Takawe Makauhaule Ani and Marianne Diaz Padikin. So as I began to prepare for my time with you today, and because we just celebrated my father's birthday two days ago, he passed in 2006, I thought that I'd share a love story. The love between my father and my mother, and what their love has taught me. Because I believe it's important that you pass along your life experiences, especially your love stories, because they give context and depth to who we all are as loving human beings, and thereby we help our younger generations to better understand who they are and the possibilities of their life. Now, my father shared many of his life stories to my brothers and I. Um, When we were around the campfire, when we hiked hidden trails at family dinners, and even when he was helping us to fix something. But he rarely spoke of this very special union between he and my mother. She had passed in the early 1960s when my brother and I were very young. But when he did share these stories, it was always filled with a very special love that embraced the abundancy of this life and this place. And he would always share these stories when we were listening to very special melee. You see, my mother was a teacher. She graduated from Roosevelt High School when when it was a normal school, remember those days? She earned a BA and an MA in education in the early 1950s, uh, one of the very first Native Hawaiian women to do so. And she was a hula dancer. She danced for Marty Robbins, remember him? She danced at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel with Andy Cummings and so many other people. She used the pathway of mele and hula to teach and to inspire. And so my father told my brother and I all about my mother through mele and hula. Now, while there are many mele and hula that is very special to our our family because of my parents, uh, there are three very special mele and hula that speaks to the abundance and the embrace of love. When I was growing up, learning hula from my aunties, because back in the day we didn't have a lot of halau, and so you learn from your ohana, my auntie taught me lovely hula hands, the way my mom danced it in the 1940s. When I first performed it, minus the cellophane um, outfit, remember those, uh, with my dad in the audience, I noted a big Cheshire cat smile on his face, and he was chuckling. Now, not the mean kind, critical chuckle, okay, but this was the real uh, kolohe, naughty kind uh, chuckle. So, of course, I needed to figure out what was going on. Well, long story short, my father knew my mother growing up because their mothers, my grandmothers, were very good friends, but he never thought of her in a romantic, you know, as in a romantic way. And until he saw her dance lovely hula hands with Marty Robbins. It was at that moment, that hula, that changed the way he thought of my mother. You know, you all know that moment 
when the rain stops, right? The clouds open, the sun streams down, voila, a choir of angels start singing, right? Endless love, right? You know that moment. Well, that happened to my, my father. You know, as I grew older, he began to tell me a little bit more about why that melee was so very important to him. Um, okay, the truth is, uh, that was my introduction to the birds and the bees. Um, and you got to give it to my dad, a single father trying to uh, teach sex to his preteen daughter, right? But what better way to do that but through a mele and a hula that both he and my mother cherished? Hence, I believe, the Cheshire cat smile. And if you ever see me perform the hula, you will know why I love that hula so much. Another hula I learned from one of my aunties, the way my mother danced it, is mine, how about me? Words and music by Charles E. King. She gifted this hula to my father on their wedding day and performed it for him on special occasions. In English, the poetry of the melee is captivating. Searching for love are you, wanting love in your heart. In the mountains, by the sea, from hither to yon, you're looking for your desire. Why not look this way? Look here at this loveliness. These cheeks you will see are soft and sweet. Straight as a cliff is my back, bright as the moon my face. Come to my bosom, we'll both be warm. These eyes pierce the heart. Kiss and you're satisfied, and I'm satisfied. These hands, these shoulders, you glance over here. There below is beauty inviting you. Take it easy. You'll be entranced with what you see. The story is told tied fast to my leading string. Watch out, you're caught, caught by me. I know a little racy on a Saturday morning, but that woke you up, right? <laughs> my father described the melee and, this melee and this hula as very, very special to him because his marriage to my mother may not have happened had he not survived the Korean War as he was part of the U.S. armed forces that had moved north across the 38th parallel and was overrun by Chinese troops. It is indeed a history lesson, a lesson in humanity and a love story, to learn how a young man kept his platoon alive and returned to the love of his life. Mine called to him, connecting my father and mother it is the hula that I gifted to my husband when we were married. And if he's lucky, I'll do it on special occasions. <laughs> but perhaps the Melian hula that connects me the most to my mother and father is Waikiki by Andy Cummings. So the story goes, as Uncle Andy told it, it was a very cold, cold, blistering winter day in East Lansing, Michigan, when he sat and wrote the lyrics for this melee as he yearned to return to his beloved warm and tropical Hawaii, to his ohana, and to those very special people that he loved. And as some of you in this room know, prior to returning home in 2008, I was on faculty for 16 years at Michigan State University in East Lansing, Michigan. So I too longed to return to my island home. My mother, when she would dance with Uncle Andy, would always be asked to dance Waikiki. And it became a favorite of our family because no matter where we traveled, we were once stationed in Germany. This Mokupuni O'ahu, and in particular the Ahupua'a of Waikiki, would always beckon us home. And when I danced with Uncle Andy, I would always dance Waikiki. To this day, 
The mele and hula links me to the great love story between my mother and father of our ohana and our love for this place, Waikiki. And it is my graduation gift to you today. Hello, ladies. So I urge you all to share your life stories through the pathways that are special to you, to your children, to your mo'opuna. In particular, please share your love stories. Because what we all learn and what we need to learn every single day is that the importance of aloha, the importance of embracing love in every breath that we share, is important. Even in the heat of battle, love and respect is important. It is in that embrace that we learn and we relearn the importance of iulu ae kevelina ake aloha. The loving is the practice of an awake mind. No laila. E kulia ikanuuka ko, let us all strive for the summit. Mahalo nui loa, o ko pakahia pau. Mahalo. Uh, mahalo so much, Maynard. Uh, that is an exceptional gift. I've been trying to get her to do hula things for years. So you got a very exceptional gift today.